I'm going to show you how to sort through this when heat trace video number three starts now. Hello, Deshaun again here from the Dell Prentice Company, and this is video number three in our heat trace series. It'll be six parts in total. However, this video is about heat trace components. If you haven't seen videos one and two, you may want to go and refresh as we talk about different components in this video and it'll catch you up to speed. Now, if you've ever ordered heat trace and it arrived to the job site, hopefully it doesn't look like this. But mentally, with all of the parts and the pieces, you may think it's like this times 10. Well, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll have a better understanding of heat trace components, where we use them and how we use them. So stay tuned. So before we can get into heat trace components, let's first start off with a basic heat trace design. When we talk about electrical heat trace designs, we have to start in the same location, the power distribution panel. In the power distribution panel, you have circuit breakers. So electricians run power via wires and also an electrical raceway out of the panel to some sort of a control device. That control device is either a thermostat or a heat trace control panel. From that panel, they'll run regular electrical wires again in a raceway till you get to what we call a transition piece. That transition piece is called a power connection kit. Basically, a power connection kit has electrical wires on one side that goes in and then out goes the heat trace. And basically it's just a transition into the heat trace. Now, the heat trace is, say for instance, put on a pipe for freeze protection. And you will continue that same heat trace line until it gets to the end. And at the end of that line, you need an end seal. Now, there are several different things that you could put inside that line. That means that you could either have a splice or you can have a T or you can have several T's. But at each line that branches off of heat trace, you need to have an end seal at the end. And that's basically a heat trace design. Now, let me give you another example. So let's go over this one more time using this demonstration here. Now, for the circuit breaker, I'm going to use this little power plug for that example. I'll be the controller or thermostat. This will be the electrical cable. Obviously, this is going to be your power connection kit, your heat trace, and your end seal. So I'm going to cut this on. And as you can see, the controller cuts on the power. The power goes to the power connection kit and then it goes through the heat trace and in the end seal. And that's your basic heat trace electrical system. Now let's look at the MI cable components. MI cable components are very simple. MI cable comes naturally with a, a connector on the end, a threaded connector. And essentially it's class one div one, like I said before, which means it's explosion proof locations. So let's look at the first one, which is a PTJB. It's essentially a round explosion proof junction box. It comes with a bracket because it doesn't have feet. It has three different openings that you can choose from. Usually when you have MI cable, it's pre-manufactured in the factory. So it means that it has an end seal that comes already attached to the, the cable. So that's all you have to be concerned about usually is the threaded um, see, I mean the threaded connector that goes into the junction box. So this covers all group ratings in class one div one. So this goes from A all the way down to group uh, E or, or, or F or whichever um, that is. Now let's talk about the, the bottom one. You're looking at the XMIJB, which is class one div one. This is a little smaller than the the PTJB, 
and it has five different openings that you could choose from. It comes automatically with mounting feet, so it doesn't come with that bracket. And then it covers groups. It doesn't cover group A in class one div one, but it covers the remaining groups. And that's essentially MI cable components that we, we handle. Now let's switch gears and, but let's stick in similar veins here. We're talking about the class one div one location for self-regulating heat trace. Now with self-regulating heat trace, it's a little different because you have the explosion proof box, which is the HAK JB3100, which is at the top there. It looks similar to the, the other two that you just previously seen, which it is somewhat similar. It has um, just a couple different openings that you can have on there. And you requ are required to have a seal off. So with each piece of heat trace that goes into that box, you will have a seal off. So you have a HAK, I mean, excuse me, a HAK C100, and that's the seal off at the bottom. And th those are the components for the seal off. Now, this particular box, we call it like an all-in-one type of box because for class one div one heat trace, self-regulating heat trace, you're gonna have a power connection kit that this serves as. You also have this serving as a splice and also a T, and it serves as an end seal. So it's an all-in-one basically kit, so you don't have to be concerned about any other components associated with the self-regulating heat trace for class one div one explosion proof locations. Now let's look at the class one division two um, location of, of heat trace, self-regulating heat trace. Now this is our typical power connection kit. And whenever you order any industrial heat trace, usually it comes with these particular kits. Our most common is the top one, which is the JBS100A. It's a, single it's a single circuit connection kit. Only has one heat trace cable that can go out of it. And it is available in a light or without a light. The next one down is the JBM100A. And the JBM, you can either use one or two circuits for this power connection kit. Now, What's our applications for this particular one? Well, usually you'll see this if you have a long run and you need two circuits, and say for instance, your power is in the middle of that pipe run, you may want to run two circuits to this box and then run your heat trace either direction, you know, let's say for instance, north or south or east or west, and um, then that way you'll have two circuits. Or you can do one circuit which might be in the middle of a pipe run. And then you just want to run that one circuit, but you want to run two heat trace cables in either direction. So this is a useful tool if you wanted to do both of those. Now this is also available with a light and without a light, but usually uh, most of our power connection kits, the JBS 100A and also the JBM, usually the customers prefer that without a light and if they want to get a light they'll get it with the end seal and we'll talk about that a little bit later now this right here is a t100 kit and this has multiple uses as well this serves as a splice with one cable in one cable out and it also serves as a t which is one cable in and two cables out now for this particular unit, you can't have direct electrical power going into the unit. This is basically powered through a heat trace cable coming in from a power connection kit somewhere. And then you'll have either one cable going out or one or, or two cables going out. Now these are all, I think I failed to mention this earlier. These are all of our high profile uh, heat trace components. Now what that means is that they will stick above four inches of insulation when you put the insulation over the pipe. 
So this is stick above that insulation. So that, that's what the name high profile means in this situation. So now at the end of every heat trace cable run, you're gonna have an end seal. Now we have two different types of end seals here. We have a E100A, which is one cable in, and this is not, not lighted at all. The one at the bottom is the E100LA, which is a lighted end seal, and that's one cable in as well. Now, the difference is you have a red light in the US, and then you have a green light in European um, environments or locations. Now, what's really beneficial about this particular lighted end seal is the fact that it goes from 120 volts all the way up to 277 volts and anywhere in between. So that means it's a 120, a 208, and also 240 volt, and also 277 volt. And that is our industrial uh, class one division two components. Now let's go with our, these, these are our high profile components. Let's go to our low profile components. Now again, this is also industrial. These are also con industrial components, but these are below the insulation. So you have your S150, which is our splice, one cable in, one cable out. You have our PMKG LT, which is a T, and then that's um, one cable in and then two cables out. And then you have the E150, which is our end seal, and that's basically one cable in. And that portion concludes our industrial heat trace components, both high profile and low profile um, components. Now we're gonna switch gears to our commercial components. In our commercial, uh, commercial components, this is our ray click series. Now our ray click series are rated for outdoor use as well as indoor use and it's non-hazard locations. All of these ray click series power kits will be single circuit, okay? Now the only difference in all of these particular components are the fact that you have either one cable out, two cables out, or three cables out. The Rayclick PC is the most common. That's one circuit, and that's one cable out. The PS would be two cables out, and then the PT would be three cables out. For splices and Ts, you have a Rayclick S, which is one cable in and one cable out. You have your Rayclick T, which is one cable in and two cables out. And you have a Rayclick S, which is one cable in, three cables out. Let's get into the end seal. The end seal is our ray click E. Now, unlike the industrial components, the commercial components for the ray click series, the power connection kits come with at least one end seal. The breakdown is like this. You have the PC has one end seal already associated in that kit. Then you have the PS, which are two end seals. The PT are three end seals. Now, when you get to splices, the Rayclick S does not include an end seal. So you will have to provide that or buy that separately. The PT has two end seals that comes with it. And then the X has three. This is a very easy installation for the end seal. Essentially, you cut back the outer jacket, you cut back the ground braid, then you place the end seal, you push it right on to the end of the cable, and with the silicone gel inside, it seals that, that end seal, and, and, or the end of that cable, and you're done. And that's a very useful tool and very easily installed tool. And that concludes our topic of the industrial and also commercial heat trace components. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please join us for our next video where we'll discuss heat trace controllers. Now, because I know you really enjoy the topic of heat trace, 
I decided to put two videos down in the description below. So take a look at those as well. It'll be about terminating both commercial and also industrial heat trace components. This is Deshaun again here, always reminding you to be safe.